The FIA Karting World Championships commence at the fabulous Power Park venue near Alaharma in Finland, four hours north of the capital city of Helsinki. Spanning 400 acres of amusement rides and holiday cottages, complete with hotel, restaurant, indoor karting facility and 5D cinema, the park opened in 1999 and the circuit is named after and designed by former Ferrari and Toyota Formula One driver Mika Salo. It's also one of the toughest technical challenges in the sport, with a complex mixture of tight bends, high curbs, narrow straights and greasy surfaces, meaning that the winner of the World Championship will certainly have earned it. After an incredible year in the 2019 European Championships, the hype and intensity of the World Championship has everyone under massive pressure. It's the weekend that everyone has been building towards, and the event that everyone wants to win. Over half the current Formula One grid have attempted to win it, and incredibly, only one has actually achieved it, namely Lando Norris in 2014. A true test of talent, patience and sheer determination, with a little bit of luck, the crown of world champion in OK and Junior truly places you in the Motorsport Hall of Fame forever. The karting is inside of uh, FIA in all the categories, inside the, the mentality, you know, of uh, everything starts from the karting, you know. So this is the school and the, the idea of uh, the game it's just the first one, you know, that we need. We, we will have the karting inside with some slalom as well, you know. I think you need to also to, to do some different things of karting that you can promote well, not only in the racetrack with the best drivers in the world, you know, in, uh, starting, but uh, also in the promotion, also in the showing the people that the karting is part of our I really hope maybe one day we have the, the Olympic Games. That would be also fantastic for, uh, for us, for karting, for the, for the sport. And uh, we also, as FIA, uh, really working on that to, to maybe see that one day we can have karting in the, in the Olympic sport. I hope it will be dry all the three days, but it looks like we have also some uh, probably race uh, or heat on the rain. And then we just prepare any condition. When we saw much or less all the, the practice, we are nearly 30, 40 drivers can win the championship, each category, and then it will be interesting for sure. We tested you know, all the different uh, situations and uh, now we know uh, also if it's raining what we, what we need to do and uh, hopefully no, but uh, I think we are almost ready for, for the race. It's quite fast track, it's uh, technical, while there is uh, banking, uh, bridge, uh, different level. It's quite a nice track, I personally like it. Uh, on 2002, I won two races with Quintarelli on uh, Formula Super A. Uh, I personally like the track. Uh, it's a bit narrow, why it's quite old, and the surface is a bit slippery. Uh, it's not so easy to find the right setting, but uh, you know, we work on and uh, hopefully we had uh, something good for, uh, for the race. The tires being reasonably hard, you need to be, you know, obviously have a bit grip in the car and obviously working together with the driver trying to find the optimized setup for, for the race, you know, the consistency. I think finding the edge, I think it's just like I said with the setup, it's trying to find the optimized, kind of the maximum of what you've got obviously in each condition because bear in mind if the weather stays the way it is today, hopefully we'll have three days of dry driving, but obviously if there are weather changes throughout the week, uh, obviously we're just going to have to be as a team set up the best obviously in each condition. I think this weekend is going to be the weather uh, changes, so we have to be prepared to everything and be quick to adapt to the different uh, kind of uh, grip and, uh, and temperature of the track. So that will be one of the main uh, tasks for, for the team this weekend. During this season uh, we have proved to be competitive in uh, several tracks, 
so we're, we're here to fight for the, the top position. Uh, but you know, in the race there are many factors that can affect the results. Uh, we, we just try to do our best and secure the best result possible. It's a very different asphalt on this circuit that creates uh, different problems than, uh, than other tracks. And uh, that's what you have to, get, uh, have to get on your hands and then you go from there. The track has been absolutely excellent in help to preparation for this event. We're very proud to be part of the FIA Karting Championships. It's the second year we are now being appointed the promoter and working together closely with the FIA and our president Felipe Massa, we're pushing very hard to help the promotion of the sport and promote it to a wider audience. So this is a fantastic Finland and even the same was last year in Kristiansand. We had a lot of drivers from Scandinavia and if I have a look to the entry list here, we have only 80 drivers from Finland and Sweden, which is amazing. And some others, of course, from uh, Denmark and even from Norway. But I think this is one of the success uh, of this event here. Let's ride aboard the Katala sports machine of junior local favorite, Tuka Tarpanen. Flat on the throttle, over the line, tucking to the left-hand side for a big drop in the first hairpin, dropping through the right and fast on the power towards the chicane. Left then right, hopping the curbs but with care. They will throw you off if you get it wrong. Up to the left-hand hairpin, one of the main overtaking spots on the circuit, then up the crest, over the bridge and along a short stretch towards the banking. This is one of the steepest corners in world karting and a tough challenge to perfect. Once the cart rolls out of the apex, you're under the bridge, keeping a straight trajectory to maximize speed. Then another climb up to the right and left of the chicane, then a long and difficult right-hand hairpin that can easily trip you up in the wet. Then back on the power again, delicately placing the cart close to the apex through the final two corners, and you're back on the power on the main straight once more. 1,200 metres and one of the toughest circuits in the sport. We've been quite fast, but not really, really fast. It's okay, we're improving, and yeah, I think the major thing here is to do good qualifying and then then do the best I can. Two weeks ago we had a race here to train and it was difficult, but now I think I know where the track so I can be more comfortable. Uh, I think all the circuit is very difficult because uh, in every sector there is a different part. In the first sector you, do, you go, the first happening is really hard because you go down and after there is the chicane where you have to take the curve. That part for me is the most important for the lap. This race is going to be really difficult because there are a lot of driving in a small gap. So yeah, it's not going to be easy, but I will do the best that I can. Yeah, it's going great so far in the dry. We're just uh, lacking a little bit, but we know where to find it. And then in the rain, just improving every session so far. Yeah, definitely with the pace we had last weekend here at the test race, we definitely think we can be on the top step this weekend. Uh, the qualifying is definitely the most tense part for setup. Obviously, if you you haven't got the setup right, you're going to struggle to start for the heat. But I think definitely either final or qualifying is the hardest for the setup. Uh, the speed is looking good. Uh, I'm losing just a little bit, and I will try to do my best. I think that the the heat will be the hardest because if you do one mistake, that's it for you because you cannot even make it to the final. There is a lot of drivers who are fast and have good speed too. Uh, yeah, there is not a lot of grip. The weather is changing a lot and it will be very hard to, I don't know, choose the right tires. If you have a good qualifying, it makes you diff uh, your weekend a lot uh, easier. Because when you can start the front, uh, you can just, um, you just can gain more time in the heat. But I think uh, qualifying is really important. And if you can work your through, way through the weekend, I think uh, it's good. Yeah, um, we're doing a lot of data this weekend, yeah, all the weekends. And, uh, but we're just trying to test as much as we can with the cart and uh, myself to, uh, to get the best performance we can. So I think that's it. A heavy rain shower before the start made life tough for the drivers, having to choose wet tyres on a drying track. Thomas Tembrinka led from pole position, but as the drivers worked their way through the first lap, a few would need to take an alternative route. 
Sadly, there would be heartache for the local fans early on, as Tuka Tarpanen would spin off, collecting Arvid Lindblad. And as they slid out of the race, they were left to wonder what could have been. But as the two young stars walked away in frustration, the rest of the field would be settling into a rhythm on this tight and twisty circuit. It would be agony for Artem Sevrukin, as the Russian couldn't complete the first lap either. But that would be nothing compared to the cruel fate that robbed James Wharton of a chance to become the first Australian for 16 years to become a karting world champion. His Paralin crawled to a halt and his many fans thousands of miles away despaired with him after a brilliant weekend. With a chance to close on Tembrinka in the lead, to lose the world championship whilst running second was too much to bear. He handed second place to Rafael Chavez Camara. Yuga Yuga Chukwu was working hard to move forward as he made a decisive pass on Christian Bratuka. But the jewel of the race came from European Championship rivals Andrea Kimi Antonelli and Jamie Day, who fought lap after lap with many overtaking bids and with varying degrees of success. Their battle gave Kaya Sixnelis an amazing opportunity and as he caught them both up, it wouldn't be long before he made his bid for the podium. First, he passed the young man from Dubai, and just a lap later, Antonelli drifted wide and Sixnelis claimed fourth position with ease. There was still a lot of time to make up on Josep Marti, but fortunately, the race was only half over. Robert de Haan was having to deal with the ruthless determination of Bertuka, who just wouldn't give up on the Dutchman. In the closing stages, Chavez Camara was throwing all his efforts into closing on Ten Brinker in the lead. Sadly, though, Yuga Chukwu would park his cart at the first bend after a spin forced him out. But after all the trials and tribulations of the season thus far, Thomas Tembrinka finally claimed his first win of the year, and it couldn't have been at a better time or place, and he became the first ever Dutchman to win the Junior World Championship. Rafael Chavez Camara came home second, and after a brilliant drive, Kaya Sixnelis fought back admirably to third. Uh, feels amazing. It was such a long race, like 24 laps, and uh, I thought it was even longer because it was in the lead the whole time. But it's amazing uh, to be world champion. I am very happy with second in the world championship. We had never been to the track before. We found it was a tough week. Two weeks ago, we didn't run in the final after all the crazy stuff that happened. Now in the world championship. Everything had just worked out for us. We had a good shot from second overall in timed qualifying, and we have been quick from Thursday right the way through to the final. I'm incredibly proud to be here and to finish as high as second. It's very nice to have been starting 16th position and to fight back to third. It really was the race of my life. Every World Championship, very tough, um, but this weekend we've come out on top in juniors. We also got all of our drivers in the final in juniors, so all six drivers were in there. I think we had three in the top 11 in the end, so it was a good team performance. Yeah, Tom has done an amazing job all year, to be fair to him, and I'm, I'm so chuffed and so pleased for him that he's won today, because all the hard work he puts in, he deserves that. 
Um, yeah, and he's moving up to seniors with us and hopefully we can bring him back next year, put him on the top step of the senior um, podium and bring one of the younger juniors through to put them where he is today. So that'll be our plan. It was our plan today, but obviously we fell. 2013 when we done it with Lando and Eno in juniors and seniors when we done the double. It was almost there today, but not quite. We'll try again next year. Yeah, it's pretty different to all we've been all year. Um, a lot of the circuits this year have been quite fast and flowing. Um, only one that's maybe similar to is somewhere like Angerville, quite tight and twisty, but um, yeah, a new, totally new challenge for um, all the teams and all the drivers. So um, yeah, it was all finding the perfect balance um, for a totally new track. Yeah, but we've been here two, two years ago, so we knew how, how was the track. Uh, we knew it's a bit uh, slippery. So we work on that because it's not like uh, really, really hot. Uh, the asphalt is not uh, really, really grippy. But I like the track. I've been here two years ago where I did the, the European finish third. I love, I love the track. I mean, the people say maybe it's quite dangerous, but at the end, we know where we are, we know what we do. But I like the track. I like Finland. Maybe only the weather is a bit, uh, you know, but I'm happy to be here. I think every heat will be difficult. I think in the end uh, we have to, to find the right setup in the right moment. I think the weather will be uh, difficult, especially tomorrow. So every heat uh, you need to be there. The mechanics need to, to do the best job in the right moment. Uh, and I think that's the key. Here the track is really tight. It's not possible to make so many moves uh, each races. So if you start in front, I think uh, you don't arrive so much in the back. I mean, you can pass, so where you start, you arrive. For sure, our target is going to be one. We, I mean, we already won quite a few championships this year and things have gone really well. And of course, it would be awesome to, to end up on, on that kind of high. It's not going to be easy. There's a lot, a lot of competitors that are very fast in this track, more than, more than usual, I would say. So it's going to be a, a tough one. But uh, I mean, that's what we're here for. As the field came around to begin the biggest race of the year, the nerves would get the better of the competitors, and a false start was declared. It would need a second attempt, but this time, Juho Valtonen would lead away from pole position on home soil. The conditions would be even tougher this time around, as Olin Viada Galli found out, damaging his cart and ending his race. But with the track almost dry enough for slicks and still very damp in places, it was going to be tougher than ever, and halfway round the first lap, Delano Van Toff and Gabriel Bortoletto would crash into the barriers from second and fourth respectively, joined by Matthias Salonen seconds later. For all three men, all they could feel was pure disbelief. This handed the lead to Valtonen in front of reigning world champion Lorenzo Travazanuto, Taylor Barnard, Kiro Smal and Rasmus Yudsimis. But the man on the move was Red Bull young gun Harry Thompson, as he charged up the inside of Yudsimis to claim fifth place. Dexter Patterson was also making a comeback, passing Matthias Mogato with ease. But for Yudsimis, it was all over, as he and Alessandro Orlando spun off, only for the Finn to push-start himself back into the action. Travis Zanuto finally caught Valtonen on lap 10, and wasn't prepared to wait any longer. He made his move and grabbed the lead. Just four laps later, and Taylor Barnard made his own bid for second, but the flying Finn would not be so forgiving with the Englishman. Then the race ended for Dina Boganovic after a spin under the bridge, and thank goodness everybody missed him. Then came the moment that determined the victory. A mistake from Travis Anuto allowed Valtonen to draw alongside. Neither driver gave way, and the two carts touched at top speed down the straight, with Travis Anuto receiving a warning from the officials. A lap later, and Barnard seized his chance and grabbed second position in the first corner, and the Italian up front was already pulling away. The shift in momentum caught out Kirill Smal, and Thompson made the move to take fourth position. But he wasn't ending his charge there. Just a lap later, and Thompson knew the chance would open up in the right-hander at the end of the lap, and the local fans would have to wait another year for a Finnish world champion. With time running out, Barnard stepped up the attack, and Kiddo Smal compounded Valtonen's woes further by snatching fourth position. But there wasn't enough time to see if Barnard could have grabbed the win. For the second year in a row, Lorenzo Travazanuto claimed the highest honour in karting, 2019 World Champion. 
The Brits stormed the podium behind him with Barnard second and Thompson third. And ever the sportsman, Travis Anuto acknowledged in Barnard just how tough an opponent he could become in the years ahead. Uh, it was definitely tough, the condition was not easy at all, so we really had to, to manage the race. Uh, being in the lead for most of the race was not, was not an easy task. Committed a little, little mistake in the, in the last part of the track. The track was not completely dry there, so it was tough because, of course, I knew the guys behind me were, were quick, so I wanted to push, but I knew it was very, very risky, so I had to balance both, both of the things. But yeah, managed to get the lead, and from there, at a at a certain point, had a very good, also decent gap and a good speed. And then at the end, we also went quite extreme. Let's say not fully dry. So at the end, we struggled a little, but was enough to manage. At the start, there was a bit of an incident on the last corner. It was a bit wet, so um, I managed to get into third position there. And from then, it was just managing the tyres and. Just doing as best as you can. I'm so happy. I'd like to say thanks to all of the team for we've been so fast all weekend and the team just done such a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, obviously um, it wasn't the outcome I wanted because the pace in the dry was phenomenal. But uh, yeah, that all sort of slipped away from me in heat one. But uh, yeah, we uh, we pushed through. We pushed through. The team done a great job, uh, especially thanks to Ricky for sorting the car out. And uh, yeah, I don't think 15th to third in a World Championship final is too awful. That's, I think, what every team tries to achieve first, to get on that point and then to hold it. From tomorrow on, we're going to work for the next race and um, we just give our best where, wherever we race or step by step. We one thing after the other. For the moment, we are happy. Um, let's enjoy the moment and see what comes. One last word for me, maybe to thank the person next to me, which uh, without him I, I, uh, I wouldn't be in this position now. I learned a lot from him, also from Peter Kaiser, so these two names I would like to thank a lot. The World Championships can be a cruel game, but for every vanquished hero, there is a worthy victor. Thomas Tenbrinker finishes his tough year in the FAA karting paddock as the rightful junior world champion as the Ricky Flynn Motorsports team celebrates another championship to add to their incredible collection. For any junior OK driver, this is the ultimate accolade any racer can achieve. And for Thomas Tembrinka, just taking it all in is an incredible experience. Forever the bridesmaid and never the bride, Thomas can now celebrate his final ever race as a junior by winning the ultimate prize before stepping up to the OK senior category in 2020. But there's joy too for the drivers joining him on the podium as Rafael Chavez Camara of Brazil and Kaya Sixnelis of Lithuania can look back on a terrific season with pride and dignity. And they are sure to be back for another chance next season. Perhaps they'll be adding their names to the list of world champions next year. But there's jubilation at CV Performance Group 2, as just two months after he claimed the European Championship title, Lorenzo Travazanuto becomes the first man since Pedro Hiltbrand in 2016 to claim the European and World titles in the same year. And the third man this century to win back-to-back -back world titles after Marco Ardigo and Nick de Vries. There's elation too for Taylor Barnard and Harry Thompson, as the Brits fly the Union flag in the pinnacle of the sport. But who will win next year? Can anybody knock Lorenzo Travazanuto off the top spot? For now, we'll let the drivers celebrate in style and thank everyone from Flying Fin Race, RGMMC and the FIA.